So um, I don't know actually when you graduated Buds, and I'm sure that it has changed a lot since since you went through. But um, I'd kind of like to reach back into Buds a little bit through your experiences and and see one. Um, did you always know you wanted to do to be a SEAL? And then how did you train? Yeah, so I did. Um, and I say always, you know, for me, it was uh, 12 years old. Um, I was actually out in San Diego in, in, on Coronado Island. Um, we were out there uh, for a fifth grade. Uh, so like in fifth grade, we had to do like a state project. And my mom used to work for the Amer- uh, used to work for the airlines. She used to work for American Airlines, and she actually would fly us to our state. Um, and so m- my sisters and I all got smarter. So I was a middle kid. My older sister she did Arizona. We did the Grand uh, Grand Canyons and all that stuff like that. Um, and then I went to California. But then my younger sister she did Hawaii. So you know it was like is everyone got smarter and went further and further west uh, for that. But um, so. California was my state. Um, we're out in San Diego and, um, I saw these guys running down the beach, um, with, uh, logs and boats. And I was just like, I was all, I, I loved swimming, um, already. And, and I knew that I wanted to be in, um, in the Navy. Um, I had family history of being in the Navy and things like that. And, um, I, I grew up wanting to be a pilot. Top gun was all on it. And so I was just kind of like, <laughs> You know, it was like, I was going to be a pilot. And then when I was 12, I saw these guys running down. I'm like, you know, I want to go do that. And I didn't even know what that was, but I was just like, that looked cool. They're in the water. You know, like I could see myself swimming and doing that stuff. And I was like, that's what I want to go do. And so then started doing some research and it was like, okay, that's, that's then started telling people, you know, right away. Like, that's what I want to go do. <laughs> the, yeah, the, um, Top Gun's funny because it actually did better for Air Force recruiting than it did for Navy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, uh, you know, so, so uh, 2005, uh, uh, joined uh, Bud's Class 258. Uh, we ended up graduating. So it was like late 2005. We ended up graduating 2000, uh, early 2006, uh, March timeframe. Um, and then uh, going to SQT, our advanced training, and then uh, ultimately going uh, to Team 4 was my first team to go to. So I, I, I wanted to come back to the East Coast. Um, but, uh, you know, so 2005, uh, my, my total time, I did 13 years. So 2005 to 2018, um, uh, 10 of that was active. Three, the last three years was in the reserves. Nice. And you, you were an, uh, an officer? I was, yeah, yep. What, what, what made you? I'm sorry. I just we, we get a lot of questions about um, officers, and we, I mean, I don't really know that much about it, but we can tell them kind of what it's like or why people become stoves or crows on our side of the house. Uh, but on the SEAL side, um, how involved are the officers in like operations and rank wise, and and kind of what's their role and responsibility? Uh, not only through buds, because I'm assuming you had to be a leader through buds, uh, but then once you get on team. Well, as you guys know, I mean, like it's it's one of those unique um, pipelines where officers and enlisted go through the same training. So buds, you know, base going to water demolition, um, seals, and um, uh, both officers and enlisted are going through the exact same training. But they're expecting you as an officer to also lead the guys, right? And it's like. I'm learning the same stuff that those guys are like, I can't really lead them to do it when I'm learning the same thing, but they, but they also, I think it also adds uh, that dynamic of, you know, having to step up when you're truly equals, right. And, and step up and then like, Hey, I am an officer. Like, this is what we're doing. You listen to what everyone is saying that we should do and make a decision. And then you go, you execute. And so, and I think that that does help groom, you know, officers to when you become uh, an AOIC, your assistant uh, uh, officer in charge. So you're, when you're a new guy and you go to your platoon, um, you have your OIC and then you have your AOIC. Uh, and I think that does that that helps that that transition helps you because it's like now you're going into a platoon where you have guys that have, uh, you know, well, obviously same guy, same, same as you. They just came out of buds like you did. Um, and you have guys that have four, five, six deployments underneath them underneath their belt or more. Um, 
And now you're second in charge of this platoon, but really you're, you're not, you know, like, yes. I mean, if the OIC, if something happened to the OIC, you're supposed to step up and take charge. But it's like, I very much relied on my chief, my team leaders and everybody else. Like, Hey, like, what the hell should I be doing here? Like, you know what, what, like, you know, um, and, and, and you learn real quickly who those guys are in your platoon. I mean, everybody knows, I mean, it's the guy that's sitting over there tinkering with his gear. It's the guy that's sitting over there and he's constantly reading. He's constantly, you know, meeting with Intel. He's constantly, you know, like he's meeting with the other ints and he's not just sitting there and he's just like, what do we do now? You know, he's the guy that is just always forward leaning. He's in the talk. He's, he's, um, you know, he's got a very regimented schedule where it's like he wakes up, he works out, he goes, checks on what the status of ops are. And, you know, it just does that whole battle rhythm thing. And he's like, not just sitting there like, I'm going to watch the next series of, uh, <laughs> of Dexter. <laughs> for the yeah, third time. <laughs> yeah. For the third time. This deployment. So nothing wrong with that. No, nothing um, wrong with it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I, th- I think that is one of the unique things of the the entire soft community, though, is that officer enlisted relationship. And uh, and one of the things that I think about all the time is uh, when people see us and they call us cowboys or whatever, and they see the uh, like the chief and you maybe calling each other by first names. Like, can you explain how we maintain professionalism, even though it looks like we're not necessarily being professional in the, the maybe the traditional military sense, like? I think, I think ultimately it comes down to that, that mutual respect, right? Like it's, it's the rank and the rank in the military is all based on time, right? It has nothing to do with experience per se, right? I mean, as long as you, as long as you keep fog in a mirror, you're going to generally progress. Now, if you do something catastrophic, right, you might not. And, and then typically those guys get out, right? But but generally speaking, in the military, if 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 you stay in 20 years, you're going to hit, you know, E9. You know, if you stay in 20 years as an officer, you're going to make captain or flag, right? So um, you're 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 going to continue to progress through that. Um, but I think that again, it goes back to we see those guys that like you know a chief. If he's a good chief, and you're you you have that relationship, you 100% respect him because he's a chief. Right. And, and, um, and, and because of his, ex- his experiences, because you know that those experiences have, have been um, tested and true and why he's in that position. Right. Um, it, it's not just because he fogged a mirror and, and kept making it through. Right. Um, at least the, at least the good ones that, that, you know, you want to be around and you want to continue to, um, uh, stand up beside the in buds, um, you know, because you, you have people that are already in the Navy that, um, you know, say they've been in the Navy for eight years and then they realize like, Hey, I really want to go be a seal. Um, kind of when you went through, what do you typically see in terms of, um, rank wise, um, I'm sure you don't have any master chiefs going through buds, but <laughs> kind of like, but you know, what, what kind of is the, the average rank, would you say? Uh, the average is, is, uh, you know, E, E4, E5, like, um, every now and then you'll find an E6 in there. Um, every now and then you'll find, a um, a Lieutenant JG or, you know, an O2 or an O3 officer. Um, but generally speaking, you're kind of in that, you know, E4, E5 range. And, um, like I said, I think we had, we had a few guys that were, uh, E6s. Um, and, and I mean, like looking back now at those guys, I'm like, dude, you know, cause I was 21 and you know, they're 10 years older than me. And it's like, <laughs> I could never imagine like how bad I hurt at 30. I was like, man, there's no way. <laughs> like that would have sucked. <laughs> uh, 